Previously, we've mentioned that the CPU has a register unit, registers being very small, very quick stores of data. And there are two categories of registers. We have special purpose registers, which are going to form the topic of this video. We're going to look at four actual types of special purpose registers. But you also have general purpose registers, which you aren't really going to focus on because they're used, as the name suggests, for very, there's no specific reason they're used. They're usually used to kind of shuffle around, temporarily hold data by a programmer when you're coding in assembly, you use for general purpose registers quite a lot. Um, and we're not really going to focus on them because they're not hugely interesting, but you can use them as a program when you're writing assembly code. Uh, but the first of the four special purpose registers is the program counter. And this is probably the first one anyone ever learns because it's very, very important for the purpose of the CPU, which is to execute instructions. It holds the address of the next instruction that's going to be executed. We talked about how the CPU always works in a cycle, the fetch execute cycle, it always executes one instruction at a time. Well, this holds the address of the next instruction that's going to be executed. So by address, we mean its location and memory. So this will be some number of the actual memory cell that it's been held in. Say um, 150 might be the address, completely arbitrary. Um, and it it tends to increment after a fetch stage. So it fetches an instruction, then it changes it, it updates it, so that the next address is the next instruction to be executed, if that makes sense. And usually, um, well, maybe not usually, but often instructions, if you can imagine them as being like lines of code, um, they follow each other. So the next instruction is going to be stored next to the other one in memory, because they're usually stored sequentially in memory. So all it has to do is actually update um, the address by one usually that's what really incrementing means but if it's a branching instruction if it jumps for code jumps from like say line 5 to line 10 or it's a completely different program then um, it will actually have to change the uh, address of a PC to a completely different one but often it will just be plus one so look out for that in exam questions the next is the accumulator which is abbreviated to ACC and this holds a result of a calculation performed by the ALU so it's again like an intermediate step. Alternatively, um, the CPU could send this result and store it somewhere in main memory, but this is a lot slower, a lot slower. It's so much quicker just to store it on the chip. And the accumulator just holds the result of a calculation because often an instruction will have to be, or several instructions will have intermediate steps and the accumulator will be used for this. So it's not an address, it's an actual result um, of whatever has been done here. True or false result might be five times 10 is 50, something like that. It's an actual result in this case. These two registers are completely separate, but the next two are kind of intrinsically linked. The first one being the memory address register, the MAR. And this holds the memory address of the data needing to be accessed by the CPU. So this means either if the data is being read from the memory, its address is stored in the MAR, or if it's being written to memory, its address is also stored in the, is also stored in the MAR. And this couples up with the memory data register, the MDR, also called the memory buffer register. And this holds the actual data being transferred to or from the memory location by the CPU, this memory location corresponding to the address in the MAR. Um, so effectively, this means they're very much linked. So when you're reading from memory, when you're getting some data from memory, the data that's addressed, that's stored in the MAR, the data that corresponds to that address is then going to get transferred to the MDR. So effectively, the data here, its address in memory is held by the MAR. And this means when you're writing to memory, the data you're holding in the MDR, it's written to whatever, register, whatever address is stored in the MAR. So the address in the MAR is the address of the data stored in the memory data register that's either going to be written to or has been read from. So whatever is being currently accessed by the CPU, whatever the CPU is currently doing essentially, is what is stored in these two. And in case you get asked this, the reason they exist, and once you learn, if you do at A-level or at university, you learn about the other registers, the other special purpose registers, you understand that actually these stand out a little bit because they seem a little bit redundant. Actually, they're there because they act as buffers. They're both interfaces. Uh, they ex effectively exist to compensate for the difference in speed between the CPU and the RAM, the main memory. The RAM is so much slower than the CPU that actually they almost are held here until the CPU uses it because the CPU might be doing something else while they're there because for efficiency reasons, it makes sense for CPU to kind of get on with something else while it's accessing it because it's so much slower in comparison. So that's what they're there for. They act as buffers. Um, and 
I hopefully you understand they're both two sides of the same coin in the fact that one's the address and one is the actual data that corresponds to that address or will correspond to that address once it gets written to memory.